Welcome back to a reusable space program. This is episode three. Um, Sean's visit to the island airfield last time was, um, well, it caused some stir, shall we say. Um, however, the data he get brought back, um, well, well, Matt and, um, and, and Scott were not happy with it. Um, they, they think that Sean's views that he's a, some sort of secret agent might be a little bit inaccurate. Um, and so they go into the hangar and they basically cut his plane in half and add another cockpit to it. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Sean, Sean is not happy about this. He likes his fast, nimble craft. However, it's decided that Scott should probably go with him. On the runway, we have Scott and Sean in their new A1B craft. Um, it's a little slower. Um, it's a little safer. Its wing wheels are a little safer. And um, Sean's taken off. He's, he's lost all interest in this craft now. It's not the fast, sort of stealthy fighter that it used to be. It's now got it's got a scientist on board. It's, it's not particularly exciting, is it? So, he's going to take it up to speed, but, you know, he's he's not particularly interested anymore. It's, if, if, if Scott's with him, it, it doesn't mean that it's a risky flight, does it? It's got a scientist with him. However, Scott, he's really excited. Scott's loving it. He's like all over the place. Like, wow, this is awesome. This is superb. Sean, Sean less so. Sean's like, yeah, I've done this before. It's fine. Yeah, it's okay. But back to task. I actually wanted to see if the scientists could do anything. Or, or more accurately, I wanted to give the scientists some experience. I want I want Scott and I want Matt to actually do some, some tasks for me. And got to level them up and at the moment we only have one one man cockpits as it were so we have to do some interesting things to try and get them a little bit of experience it would be very easy for me to just use sean and nakot for all of my uh, for all of my um, missions and they would level up their pilot and skills and things like that and, and that would make them a lot easier but i'm gonna need science and i'm gonna need engineers at the few in the future because i believe the next uh, the next version of kerbal space program is going to require at least engineers for attaching things to other things and I like that that could be a really big thing for the reusable space program being able to actually construct things in stock in space would be quite cool or on a surface anyway right now Sean is bored Sean is actually bored he's done this flight before he, he likes new things he doesn't like to repeat you know what he could have been one of those those drivers of the trains or whatever it is that Kerbals have underground in their boroughs I, I don't know what they have the mass more semi Kerbal transit system. No, he wants to be a pilot. He wants to be a, a an ace test pilot. And then this isn't test piloting. This is flying the same craft he's flown before, but with more weight in it, in the form of a scientist. <sighs> However, Sean's loving it. Uh, Scott's loving it. Sean's not. So he dropped the engines out. He's going to just do it he did last time. He's, he, he knows that there's something could go wrong with the craft. He's just going to parachute it in. He doesn't. He doesn't see the need to do something different. This craft, you know, it's a safe craft. It's got safe wheel positions. It's everything safe about it. He's been told how safe it is, and that he's allowed to have a pilot, a, a, a co-pilot, or a passenger in now because, yeah, he feels a bit like a bus driver or a taxi driver right now. I'm going to be honest. He's not into the passenger service thing. Um. So yeah, there we go. He just yeah, uh, yeah, fires the parachutes and. Yeah, he's very lackadaisical about it, in fact. In reality, the parachute approach to this is probably the safest thing because he, looking back at it, although I moved the position of the wheels on the back there, I don't think it would have added any extra stability. Um, having played around a bit since this uh, with with Kerbal and actually with Realism of all things like that on my other series, um, I found that, oddly enough, the most stability seems to come with the wheels reasonably close to the centre. So, um yeah I'm, I'm i'm undecided as to whether this craft would have landed nicely nicely on on its wheel situation um obviously at this point scott is doing all the science he can and, and every time he shouts something to sean and says oh look at this i found this sean turns around and said yeah i've already seen it yep seen that seen that sean is actually a little annoyed that they feel he couldn't do this task properly on his own they feel you know he, he's upset that he came here he got all this science which isn't his job he's just a test pilot and um and then they criticised him, so he's he's a bit he's a bit upset, if anything, about this, and he wants to get back to doing things on his own. Scott, however, excited beyond belief, he's like, "Yeah, this is awesome, and brilliant. We're doing all sorts of crazy stuff with the planes and stuff. I'm I'm a, I'm a proper science pilot plane driver now. It's brilliant." Um, he's not. Sean knows he's not. No. Sean Sean turns the engine back on. He's he's thinking should we, should we should we move forward a little bit? Just maybe edge towards the what's going on. 
And he asks Scott, and Scott's like, oh, no, we can't risk the craft. We can't risk the craft. We've got to be safe. Sean doesn't agree with that. No, he's going to spin around. He's going to get onto this runway. He's going to have a look around, I think. Um, he doesn't like being limited by the science team or the engineering team. He likes them to build him things that he can fly, and then, you know, they can build him bigger things that he can fly. Having one of them on board, not a big thing for him. However, Scott in the back seat's talking to him all about these wonderful, amazing atmospheric pressure conditions that he's finding out about. All, all Sean cares about is the fact that he's now actually landed on a runway as opposed to a grass hill that he did last time. And this runway, oddly enough, looks as though it should be uneven, but he's very smooth. It's almost as if it's been painted on. It's almost as if it's trying to make itself out for being not used, but it's actually very well designed. This is a very odd environment here. It's like somebody's placed it here for a reason. Scott doesn't think any of that. He just thinks it's nice and different. Anyway, with the science they got back, we could actually add on some more parts and we can get some some um, additional sort of parachute parts, some extra rocket parts. We've got, you know, 188 science to spend here. And this is quite exciting because we can actually add quite a few different little parts on. Um, what I would really like to get to is cargo bears and things like that, because if we do get to orbital flight, then we're going to need to take stuff up there. However, that that is going to take us a, a, a whack of science. So we're going to have to be quite creative getting to that point. But we know that our next target is probably going to have to be getting out the atmosphere with a Kerbal. We've, we've, we've fired our rockets low and high. Now it's about time we get out of this atmosphere, we get into space, and we get all that lovely, lovely science from there. So to do that, we have the X2B. We've changed the fuel tanks a little bit, so they're actually slightly bigger tanks. And we have put uh, only one of our science juniors on it to try and lighten it down a bit. We're going to check all of our um, staging and uh, action groups and whatnot. And um, yeah, we're going to put Sean in because Sean deserves something after he's having to be a passenger service for Scott. So Sean's very excited. You see, he's very excited. We launch off and we are just basically going to try and aim to exit the atmosphere right now. This mission is about getting out of the atmosphere. He's so excited. He's very little piloting required at this point. Sean is loving this. He's on his own finally. He's got a big rocket engine behind him. He feels like Jebediah of legend. He feels like he is the king. He knows he's going to be flying high. He's going to go down in the history books as the not first Kerbal to do this because obviously loads of people have done it before. Um, the, the craft works really well, actually. Uh, the thrust, we do keep the thrust down because, again, we don't want to overheat too much. We're going to head off towards the mountains because, ideally, I'd really like to have this craft land in a mountain. Unfortunately, we don't have as much fuel as we probably thought we did. Which, you know, is fine. But it does mean that Sean, although he's going to get high science, is not going to get out of the atmosphere space science. He does an aviate because he can now. Um, he f finds it very odd to be hanging on the side of a capsule flying through the air, but it, the air is very thin. It, it doesn't feel normal to him. It's it's a new experience, actually. He comes back in with his science, and and then he gets the, the, the call from mission control, which is, you know, activate your parachutes. He's at this point, he's thinking that his parachutes would likely do nothing because the air is so very thin, but he does it. And then um, ooh, almost snaps his neck as they open. Yeah. That was a problem. That was a problem for us. So we come down through the atmosphere, um, just trying to gather as much science as we can. Um, um, and we've actually got quite a bit. Now, Sean looks out the window and realizes that he seems to be somewhere he's never been before. In fact, he can't see the KSC. He seems to be surrounded by big, rocky mountains. And um, he, he he's, he's a little scared by this, but he gets out anywhere because that's who he is. Sean, the sort of secret agent ace flying person who isn't really scared of things. However, he does notice that he can't see anybody and nobody seems to know where he is. And his radio has stopped working. He just, he, he's trying to contact them. He just, he actually thinks that, that Matt and Scott are actually jealous of him and they've actually turned his radio off. So that's what it is. Um, anyway, he floats down. Um, nice and slowly luckily on this craft we have got all those parachutes because um we are likely to come down in quite a steep uh, location and uh, there's actually we're, we're we're about two two kilometers up still but we're going to hit the ground reasonably soon um so we've got about a kilometer and a half up which is staggering actually considering it's green 
Um, so we speed down towards the ground and this is when I then have to start thinking about what's the best way to do this. Do I want to? I don't want to stand on my tip. I would really like to use the parachutes to slow me down. So I start to tilt the craft into the hill so that we can use the parachute just to pull us down. Now, if I hadn't done that, there's a chance it would have fallen over and smacked something off. So that was a, a little bit of a, a, a way of doing that. So we're on our side. We'll get a bit of science as best we can. Um, and uh, yeah, Sean yet again has brought us some science home. Maybe next time we'll get to, uh, to space, Sean. Don't you think? I think so. Let's try it. So we have another X2B. We're gonna make some changes. We're gonna stick some more fuel tanks in. Yeah, in fact, we're gonna stick bigger fuel tanks in. Yeah, get rid of that. We just need big fuel tanks. Yeah, big fuel tanks, make them nice and matching. And that's going to give us the same amount of fuel, but we know that didn't get us into orbit last time. So we're going to give ourselves a, a little little bit more fuel, make that pretty. Um, we're going to call this the X2C. Now, we have a mission, and that mission is to actually deploy these decouplers when we're splashed down. I'm trying to avoid these sort of missions, but in my mind, if we deploy them when we're splashed down, we can then recover them. So I think that counts. So we're going to take off. Again, we're going to try and go in a nice high arc. Um, this time, however, we're also going to try and um, use a little bit of engine power in our, in our landing, I think. So this time it's Nakot. Nakot has jumped in in front of Sean and said she wants to try and see if she can get into the upper atmosphere and if she can get into space because she thinks Sean actually is just, is just a big ego. Um, she might be a woman, but you know what? She's as capable, in fact, more capable than Sean. So... She's riding her rocket up. She knows she's got these little extra bits on the side. She doesn't have the fins that Sean had because she doesn't need them. Sean, Sean was just, just being silly. Why did he need fins? Got a beautiful gimbling engine. Why did he need fins? And now she actually gets up pretty high, in fact, and, and it, it's it's a really nice altitude. So she she just scrapes the uh, the, the edge of space. I'm, I'm telling you now. It says in the bottom left hand corner. Um, She's going to scrape the edge of space, something that Sean has not done, which means that Nakot Kerman will be the first of our pilots to make it into space. Sean is not going to be happy about that. Yeah, yeah a girl doing that before him. Oof. Anyway, so she gets to do the science from, from space. She gets to be the first person to do an EVA in space. Yay, woman power, eh? Um, she is just now thinking about how she's going to come back down because she's just realized she's a long way up and it's quite a long way back down. So she prepares herself. She's activated her parachutes. She still has her um, her task to do. So she needs to land in water. She knows she launched from the uh, mission control to the east. So she should come down in the water unless she was to accidentally land on an island, which is very unlikely and would be very funny if she did. High up in the atmosphere, we fire the engine just a little. So we had that bottom tank that was actually locked off. And that, number one, gives us a bit of weight in the bottom of the uh, craft to keep us upright, but also gives us some fuel and some gimbling power. So we're just running the engine really low, and I'm keeping my eye on the fuel level because I just wanted to take the edge off that uh, off that actual velocity. So our return from orbit there was about 600 meters per second by the time we hit 30 kilometers, which is a really nice slow speed. We actually took a lot of speed out of our fall by using that engine, which means when we fire our parachutes like that, it doesn't snap our neck. And these parachutes are just the drogue chutes, and then we've got the main chutes going. And now we're gonna fire our engine just a little bit because we wanna lose a little bit more, more energy, and we wanna lose that weight. We don't need to carry all this fuel all the way down. We know this craft will actually go into the water nicely. So we can now dump it and just slide on down. We've got a lot of parachutes on this craft. So drug chutes are out, fully ex extended. And we're slowing down to about 29 meters per second. That's a really nice speed. Then we get our main chutes out. And we're now sub six meters per second. We know we can land that. So we're just gonna speed on down. Nakot is the first Kerbal to go to to space and come back. Isn't that amazing? However, she's got one mission left to do, which is to try those decouplers. It did not require that we take them to space, but we did it anyway. Right, off we go. We just a final bit of fuel used up. Oh, and use the parachutes to turn us over. Wonderful. Now let's, um, should we fire those things off? 
No, we'll do an EVA first. All right. There we go. And you'll see we can actually collect those. They didn't go very far, did they? We can collect those when we collect the ship. So I'm going to consider those reusable. All right. Nakot's going to do her uh, science stuff. And while she's doing that, I wish you all the best. Have a great one. And I'll see you next time.